So anyway, so does that answer your question? Okay, Dan, you cool? Or whoever asked that question? Oh, sorry. Oh, was it you, Ando? Oh, it was you, Ken. Oh. See me after the class, but you know, I can't carry you right now. All right, so anyway, let's go back to these variable resistors or potentiometer. Uh, they call potentiometers potential. The term potential is another fancy word for voltage. And a potentiometer they use to change voltages on things. Nobody calls it a potentiometer. Everybody just calls it a pot for short. So this is the only kind of pot you're allowed to have at Namco. And, uh, and we use potentiometers all over the place. Uh, for instance, um, in the... Uh, in the power supply, there's a voltage adjustment potentiometer right here that used to adjust the output voltage of the power supply. In a monitor, there's a mess of pots in the monitor. Things like the vertical, adjusting the vertical hold of a monitor, the vertical size, horizontal hold, just about anything that you twist to adjust. A volume control on a board is, uh, is the potentiometer. Pots, all, they're all the same thing. Uh, I have a little pot here that I've hooked up just to give you this fabulous, just really fabulous, fabulous demonstration here. Uh, I've got a potentiometer connected to a lamp. As I adjust the pot, the lamp dims. Ooh, ah, ooh, hoo -hoo. yeah, that's good for 15 seconds of fun, all right. Okay, so, anyway. Uh, let's let's just take a close look at the pot, and you'll see what I'm talking about here. And if we look here at the pot, and, and you can really kind of see what it, what it's actually doing. In fact, let me put it down here so that I can uh, adjust it. And what you see there is the wiper of the pot. And as I turn the pot, you can see the wiper move. The wiper is just like a wiper on a on a mo on a motor, like a brush, I should say, on a motor. Now this particular potentiometer is a wire wound pot, but you can see that as I adjust it, the light gets brighter, dimmer. Ooh ah, ooh ah. Ooh, ah. Yeah, okay. Now this pot you can see is wire wound. You can see the, 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 the little wire wrapped around it, and you can really see how the wiper just touches the wire. The pots that I've given you are carbon. Potentiometers can be carbon or they can be wire wound. The difference is how much power they can handle, how much current they can handle, basically. Well, here's what's inside the pot. Um, inside the pot, there is some kind of resistance element whether it's carbon, like yours are, or wire, like the one that I just showed you, something that has resistance on it. And that's two of the three terminals that are on the potentiometer. Then the wiper, which is the thing that you turn, actually is touching the resistance element, as I showed you earlier, that goes to the third lead. Again, it's called the wiper of the pot. The wiper of the potentiometer. And, and here's how it works. It's really simple. Let's say, for example, that I have a 1K potentiometer, 1,000 ohms. That means that from one side of the resistance to the other side is a 1,000 ohms. If I were to measure the resistor from one side to another, I would get 1,000 ohms of resistance. Depending on where the wiper is set, we can get any value we want. For instance, let's say the wiper is all the way at this side. If I were to measure the resistance with my meter, there's the meter probe, If the wiper was all the way at one side, right now I would have zero ohms of resistance because the, the, the meter would go through the wiper right back out again. It never has to hit any of the resistance element at all, does it? It doesn't go through any of that at all. So that would be zero ohms. 
Let's say I rotate the wiper one quarter of the way up. Well now the current has to flow through the wiper and through part of the resistance, one quarter of the resistance. Well shit, if it's a 1K pot and I'm going through one quarter of the resistance, I guess I probably have about 250 ohms there, which I would. Rotate it halfway up, obviously 500 ohms because now we have to go through half of the, remember this is resistance here, half of the value of the resistor. You know, if I, if I turn the wiper a little further, three quarters of the way, 750 ohms obviously, and if the wiper's all the way at the far edge like this, well now the electric current has to flow through the entire resistance element before coming back out and we'd have the full scale value of 1K. Now, uh, we're going to look at, um, we're going to look at uh, a bunch of different places that we use pots and we're going we're to see you know, what, what we use them for as we go through the class. I'll show you more and more things um, with pots, but how do you test them? Well, when pots go bad, there's uh, only two things that generally go, go wrong with them. First of all, I rarely see bad pots. Usually the only thing that will cause a bad pot is when somebody breaks the damn thing off. You know how sensitive that neck board is. On the neck board of the monitor, there are uh, usually five very delicate little potentiometers. In fact, where are those monitor, uh, are those monitor chassis in the, in the back room here? Oh yeah. When you look at a monitor chassis uh, on the neck board here, uh, uh, this is what we commonly call the neck board of the, of the monitor for obvious reasons. It goes on the neck of the picture tube. Uh, but there are three potentiometers here, and these guys are incredibly delicate. These little tiny pots, man, if you just barely hit those wrong, you'll break them right off. There's two more over here on the other side right here. And there's a whole row of them back here. There's a whole row of little teeny weeny pots here. And the problem is that most of most game technicians are, you know, they're used to using big hammers and stuff like that. And, and you get your, you know, you get in there with your big old hand, you bust something off. It's real easy to break them off. So that's what usually happens. Yeah, I'll use the big universal backdoor key. Um, <laughs> universe here. Give me, let me show you universe. Universal backdoor key. <laughs> oh no, that's this one. Here, this is the one. This is the real. This is the better one. This is the deluxe. The deluxe universal backdoor key. Anyway, um, so one thing that happens is you just break them off. Um, the other thing that can happen is the pot can crack like this. Turn in your hand, your blue book, to page seven. I think it is. The first 10 pages of your book is an article on how to use a digital multimeter. And on page 7 you see checking a potentiometer, testing potentiometers, uh, just so you know where to find it. There's lots of things in the book. I won't necessarily cover everything in the book. Uh, I'm not the kind of instructor that will stand in front of you and read from the book. I assume everybody here knows how to read. So I'm just going to show you where to find some things later on in case you forget. Anyway, one of the things that can go wrong with a pot is that the resistance element can crack on these carbon pots. This is especially common where the wiper has been in one place for seven years. It's an especially common problem on the type of monitor that's in your vigilante game, surely, and that's in this monitor here. There's a potentiometer on these things that uh, it's called black level. It's a brightness control. And it sits in one spot for years and years and years and eventually it cracks and causes no picture. And then you barely move the pot and it comes back on full blast. If you ever have a problem where you can't adjust something, you're trying to adjust something and, and you just barely move the pot and the size or the volume or whatever it is that you're adjusting and the voltage jumps like crazy, the, pot, the pot's bad. So one of the first things that you do when you test the pot is to check from one end of the wiper, or I'm sorry, from one end of the pot to the other, not the wiper. And what you're doing is you're just checking to see that the pot is continuous, 
That is that it's not broken from one end, one side to another. Oh, where the hell is that eraser? Right oh. oh, thank you very much. All right. In other words, what you're doing is putting one meter lead on this side, one on this side, checking to see that it's the right number of ohms. Also, there's another cool thing about this. Very often when you look at a little pot, it doesn't tell you how many ohms it is. Sometimes it does, but sometimes you look at a pot and it doesn't tell you. The way you can tell how many ohms a pot is, is by measuring from here to here and see how many ohms it is. That tells you the total value of the pot. Uh, on the other hand, if you checked, let's say it's supposed to be 1K, and you check it with your meter, and your meter says that it's open, then obviously the pot is bad, it's cracked somewhere. So that's test number one. Then the other thing that can go wrong with a pot is that the connection between the wiper and the resistance element goes bad. It just gets dirty, basically. And you've probably heard this on your car radio or your stereo at home. You go to adjust the volume, it goes... <laughs> They change those circuits, and modern, modern radios don't do that anymore um, for reasons that I can't get into right now. But uh, that's when the pot gets dirty. And, and typically in a game, what will happen is you'll go to adjust the power supply voltage, and you just, as you just barely move it, the thing jumps up and down, the voltage fluctuates like crazy. Or you're adjusting the vertical size control of a monitor, and it, it just jumps all around like this. Usually the pot's just bad, and usually all you have to do is just rotate it a few times back and forth, which you don't want to do with the power turned on because you're adjusting something crazy. Turn off the power, adjust it back and forth, and usually that cleans it off. Other than that, they do have some cleaner sprays that you can get at like Radio Shack and places like that. I personally rarely find pots to be bad, and, and when I do, I usually just change them rather than clean them, to be honest with you. But just to kind of give you an example, we had a service call on a monitor, and the service call was that the picture was jumpy, jumpy picture. So the service guy went out there, yeah, jumpy picture. He pulls the monitor out, brings it back into the shop, and I plug it in on the bench, and yeah, it's jumpy, but I realize that it's not jumping up and down like this. It's getting bigger and smaller. The picture's getting bigger, smaller, bigger, smaller, like this. Big difference between this, which would be the vertical size, I'm sorry, the vertical position, and this, which is the vertical size, the height of the picture. Well, I mean, that's all it must have been. It was just that, and I, I just took the, the vertical size pod and rotated it back and forth a few times. picture was solid as a rock. When I put it back, I didn't put it in the exact same position. I moved it over just a little bit, making the picture just slightly small, which I don't mind seeing a little black on the tops and the size of the picture personally, uh, and it was fine. That's what he should have done out in the field. That was a really stupid thing to do because he went out there, saw that it was jumpy, drove 20 miles back to the shop, got another monitor, drove 20 miles back out there to change it. If he had been observant and had noticed the thing, oh, it's getting bigger and smaller. Vertical size, that's all it was, was just the pot adjustment. Okay, So um, that's almost all that, that will ever happen uh, as far as pots are concerned. Like I said, usually I look at them, they're broken in half.